Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper and this is Boundary by Schleppy Engineering. So the Boundary is in essence a combination of a uh, search DUSG inspired function generator and a VCA. And it does have a lot of tricks up its sleeve that I've never seen in, well, either one of these <laughs> things before, let alone combined. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick introduction during this video. I'm just going to run through its basic functionalities and I will be doing a follow-up video where I'm going to be going into a bit more um, complex or challenging or uh, more advanced patches later on. Uh, but I did want to make sure that everyone had a chance to see the boundary before we actually had our interview with Eric, which is, um, well, which is actually scheduled for uh, next Tuesday. So make sure that you're uh, joining us for that. I do have to thank Eric and the rest of Schlappy Engineering for making the boundary available for us and actually making sure that we were able to make this uh, episode. So uh, thanks again, Al. Um, that being said, well, let's just dive in, shall we? So uh, here we go. So here we have the boundary by Schlappy Engineering up close and personal. Um, as I said during the introduction, it is in essence a combination of a well, a function generator and a VCA. And why that makes sense is, of course, if you look at where we see function generators typically being applied, and that is to design envelopes primarily, uh, even though you can do much more things with them and much more imaginary, th well, <laughs> imaginative things with them even. But still, it makes sense to have an envelope combined with a VCA, and you can do beautiful things with them. So let's just quickly run through. So the one beautiful thing is, of course, you've got your rise and your fall slew limiters, and the, the sentence that you can do there. Uh, you can set it to cycle, as you can see. That's perfect. Um, so what cycle actually does, is it actually just takes the, well, the settings that you've got here and starts to design an actual LFO with them. And to be quite honest, I'm just gonna show you what this looks like. So I'm just gonna turn this off and I'm just gonna grab the output straight away. And I'm gonna use that to explain everything that's going on on this module. So you can immediately see that if we turn cycle on, that we get some sort of a signal there. So if I then zoom in on that signal, let me just do that straight away if we can find it, there you go. So it's just a triangle wave, uh, purely positive, um, that's just happening there. And if we then increase the, well, in this case, the the rise, you'll see that we can turn this into something that resembles a, uh, a ramp. And if we then increase the, uh, the fall, we get a saw, pretty neat, right? And we can just, of course, do the same thing at the same time, make sure that you get a a longer frequency triangle wave, everything you might want. So that's uh, that's the first thing that you can do. Um, what you can then also do is change the actual shape of the ramp and the shape of the fall. That's of course something that if you remember your, uh, your uh, make noise maths, you can only do this for the overall shape um, and then of course you can increase in, indeed patch math so that you can have independent control about the uh, rise and the fall shape uh, but in this case you have it all at the same time so then what you can also do is you can invert the shape there you go i'm going to do that for both so there you go so we're actually shortening it even going purely really high into the uh, the audio range there. Let's see if I can easily patch this around so we can actually listen to it. So I'm just gonna use this and patch it into the Buff Jarvis, grab one output and put, patch it back into the ES9 and then grab another cable, where is it? There we go. And patch that into my mixer. 
and you already hear that this is ex this is quite high, right? And if we then we go really high, but if we then put them into the positive, we can go into LFO ranges, of course, just by playing with the sh with the shapes. Also go into audio rate or LFO rate by changing the uh, the slew, but let's just uh, play around with this a bit. So I'm just gonna change this. There you go. Let's uh, make that like this. So you can do all kinds of uh, shape designs that you might not be capable of doing with your. Uh, other devices so there you go um, then so we've covered these what I haven't touched upon is of course the lights so if I turn this into something that looks a bit more like that maybe even a bit like that uh, what you'll actually see is the first light that's only uh, shining bright if we're in the rise stage let me just uh, zoom out a bit here so we can actually see what's happening And the second one is, of course, only shining bright if we're in the full stage. And the last one is actually just showing us the, well, the actual voltage that we uh, push out of it. So that's um, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to let this go for now. Then we are getting into VCA territory. I'm going to talk about how these uh, will react based on the CV that's put in, into the inputs, of course, later on. So in the VCA stage, um, you do have your CV control and you have your bias and you can immediately see that we have a well a light for that as well uh, you can invert this and you can make this well, so this is only positive and in this case you can actually go from negative all the way to positive and again the light is a great little help there so what we then need to talk about is all of these inputs so these inputs in this segment you might say all relate to the well the slew limiter the function generator and these are of course for the VCA so we have several pretty straightforward um, connectors here so you've got a trig input which is just going to trigger if this is in cycle off mode just going to trigger the well, the actual function just once. Here we've got a slew. So again, you throw any sort of signal in there and it's gonna slew both the rise and the fall. Uh, so this is something where you would, for instance, throw in a gate or uh, throw in any other shape that you want to uh, mangle. Um, you have your control over the rise and the same thing is true, of course, for the fall. Then you've got your rectify input. So if you do input something that is well that can contain both negative and, vo and positive voltages uh, like something like an LFO or something and you do want that to be rectified you can also use this for your audio signals because audio signals typically go from negative to positive and vice versa so that's pretty neat bound is one of the I would say <laughs> the uh, the most interesting things about this module so as you saw, if you turn this to cycle, it's gonna go up and then when it reach its maximum, it's gonna start the fall stage as well. But how about if you were able to control uh, the actual voltage that the rise will stop and the fall will start? That's exactly what bound does. And the best example of that would of course be the well the bouncing ball uh, that we've all done with mats previously so that is of course something that's pretty neat um, I'm going to show that later on then you've got your uh, end of rise so this is going to be this is going to output a gate and that gate is going to be positive if you're in your full stage so it's going to go up at the end of rise and it's going to stay positive until um, rise starts again and then of course you've got your output of the function generator which is indeed normal to CV1 so again you've got your CV1 so if you 
input something like an audio signal there and you trigger or you uh, put some gates there then you already have that VCA to control your um, your sounds ready to go and then you've got your output there so two two CVs as I said uh, so you can indeed throw in two CV signals which will then be mixed and uh, well that being said let's uh, let's have a quick look right um, so let's start with a well let's start with an LFO signal so I'm just gonna disconnect the things that we've got here there you go and I'm just gonna grab an LFO which is going to be a pulse LFO and I'm just gonna mold that so we can actually show you what we're working with uh, I might need to grab a longer cable for that which is not a problem I've got everything here and so this is the actual signal that we've got let's make sure that we make sure that we have something that's going a bit faster something like that right now I might want to zoom in a bit so we can actually see some changes there there you go a nice pulse that we get in there so I'm just gonna grab that and I'm gonna input that to the boundary so first I'm just gonna put that into the trigger and then the actual output is going to be malted as well because I want to show you what we're working with there we go so you see that right so if we then turn all of these down and if I then just turn up the fall just slightly we're going to see that the well the moment the signal goes from negative to positive it's going to trigger the actual function that we're creating as you can see we can easily change that and play with that add a bit of uh, attack to it and a bit of decay to that as well so you immediately see that i'm starting to talk in um, an envelope <laughs> term so we're talking about attack decay those kind of things and we can then of course play with the actual shape of it we might want to reduce it if we want to change it to a different shape something like that oh yes but that's already quite interesting so there you have it isn't that neat if we just flip that as well we might want to uh, yeah we have some nice things that we can play with so we might just say well we want to have it like that and we then just uh, throw it around make it a bit like that there you go okay so now if we then instead of using this in a trigger mode we're just going to throw it into the slew input let me just do it like that so if we turn everything down as you can see we are just going to get the well the expected uh, response so that's just following the well the shape of the pulse wave but we can then of course start to introduce a bit of rise slew there you go and we can introduce a bit of fall slew and if we then start to play with the actual shapes Yeah, let's make it something like that. Or maybe even something like this even. There you go. And then we might just say, yeah. So that's a nice one, right? So as said so this is something that you can then easily start to use so now if we instead of just using this into the slew input let's throw this into the rectify 
and what you'll immediately see if we, if we turn everything down apologies for touching the camera there is that we are getting a well a very well just a a, 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 a totally positive sa uh, signal so we can't do anything with this but if we then take for instance the triangle shape so you immediately see that we get the the blue shape is the original one and we then rectify it into the well the, the pink one and then of course we can do the same thing we can start introducing some slew um, on both parts of the shape there you go so that's ex uh, essentially what rectify does which is of course quite neat right um, let's have a quick look at bound then so I'm just gonna input the same signal here into bound and I'm just gonna flip the cycle mode so before I do that let's just do it like that so this is the um, the shape that we uh, that we have I might want to reduce that uh, slightly so we can see the actual waves a bit better maybe a bit shorter than that uh, that looks great right so what we then want to do is if I introduce bound and instead of just using this I'm just gonna connect that straight away there you go this is in that one we can actually do it in the slew one then you can only see the the positive ones but if you do that in bound it's just it's just great so this is essentially the bouncing ball of course so if you then well might need to do it a bit like that and if we then use this signal as an input from there and I'm just gonna grab a bit of sound from my owner there and we will get something like this if this is in the, in the running yeah not sure why we're not hearing anything I might need to disconnect that and introduce a bit of CV if we then And as you can see, the frequency actually goes up, of course, when the well the boundary has been lowered, because then, of course, the the rate of rise and the the, the rate of falling uh, will, of course, stay the same. But therefore, the actual frequency will go down. And you can then, of course, also use this as something that you can then use as an input for the actual owner. So instead of just using it like that, I'm just going to use it as something that's going to regulate the full product not sure if you can actually hear that but it's something i, I totally like to do but it's perfect all right i love it so um, that being said, so that, that's a bit about the, the bound. Um, what I want to do is I just want to show you how, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'll mostly use this, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys at home and gals at home will be using it. And that is, of course, as a an envelope designer. So I'm just going to grab, yeah, let's just 
grab my standard sequence from Hermit. Um, so we have it like that. So we have it running. We have it playing. And I'm just going to grab the the full peroxide from there, patch it into the owner, and just to let you hear what that actually is right now. So this is the the normal sound that we get. But instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to patch that into the boundary in the input there. And I am going to grab the output and patch it into there. So there we go. And we're still in cycle mode. So if we then disconnect cycle mode, turn everything down, there you go. And now we can actually start to use the output from the gate signal there. Instead of using that from the oscillator, we're just going to grab this. So there you see the actual gate signal that we uh, receive. And I'm just going to patch that into the slew input. I could, of course, also do that through the trigger. But I think as we've got a gate signal, why not use it? don't get the actual signal visible. There you go. So now we would be able to see it. Let me just zoom in a bit. Now you can actually see it. That's beautiful, isn't it? So very easy, you've got a, oh, an envelope designer and you've got your VCA in one. So makes patching just a breeze. Um, pretty straightforward, right? So um, that's something that you can use. Um, another thing is of course that as we are looking at something that is able to control, well, uh, slew rates, how about instead of just pass, passing in gates or anything like that, how about we actually just throw in something that well, is a bit more audio-like? So how about we just throw in a kick sound? So um, I'm now just patching in the kick from the MRG kick. And I'm, as you can probably see, well, it's not being triggered yet. I'm just going to throw this into a trigger from Pam's new workout. There you see. I might want to reduce that a bit. There you go. And we can actually even listen to that as well if we want. Let me just patch that in. And what we can now do is we can actually patch this into boundary. Let me just grab a cable here real quickly. And we can of course throw this into the trigger input. And I can show you what this does. There you go. Let's just reduce all of this.
And if we then introduce a bit of fall, it's quite nice, right? And what we can also do, we can also throw this into the slew part. There you go. And if we then in indeed increase the the full slew, we are actually designing something that's already looking a lot like an envelope follower. Let's see if we can make it a bit more tight there. There you go. And to make things even easier, you can also just patch it into the rectify and then just make it a bit tighter even. So essentially we now have an envelope follower for this kick drum. Um, what you can then also do, and that's one of the nice things here, is you can also use this as a ducking effect or a side chaining effect, however you want to call it. I, I know that there are different people and different uh, opinions on how you should call that. And personally, I don't want to <laughs> get in the middle of that. So let's just grab another cable. And I'm just gonna grab a drone from the owner. Throw that in there. And just connect it to the mix. If I just then open up the bias. So this is the actual sound and if we then introduce some CV and I do need to flip the switch to invert it let me just uh, lower the sound of the bass drum That's great, right? Really get that pumping action going. I just love that, right? It's just a, such a great thing. Um, and this is, in all honesty, I can go on and on. There's so many other things that you can do with a boundary. Uh, you can use this for ring modulation, where you just use the uh, the LFO way, the, the actual cycling, to do some ring mods there as well. Um, the sky is the actual limit with boundary so don't just think of this as a very simple uh, replacement for mats or rampage or any other um, well module that was it, uh, well inspired by the surge uh, DUSG uh, but this thing has some great tricks up its sleeve uh, one of the things I truly love is the, the way how you can actually shape both the rise and fall separately I love the way how Eric has been able to in include an actual, um, just a, a, that VCA there as well. It's, it makes handling this, this, this thing so extremely easy and so um, inspiring everyone to go on a journey and try to figure out what you can actually do with this thing. Um, I'm going to keep this in my case for a long, long time and I'm going to, partner this up with maths and some of my other uh, function generators as well because I think that there is a time and place for all of them um, but the boundary is really something that has um, challenged me but also pushed me further to uh, really start to investigate and and do great things so that being said I would say let's go back to the studio and I would say uh, see you then cheers <laughs> So I do hope that everyone enjoyed this first video on the boundary by Schleppy Engineering. Um, as I said, um, this is just part one. I initially thought about just doing one big video and just making sure that we had the introduction and the deep dive combined. Uh, but while I was filming the actual introduction, I, <laughs> I came to the conclusion that it would already be quite an extensive video anyway. So why not, uh, well, chop it up and make sure that we have two parts. Um, so if you already know uh, a lot of things about, um, well, about boundary and you're really interested in the advanced stuff, you can go to watch that video. And if you wanted to have the introductory overview, you can watch this video. So that being said, um, I do want to thank Eric Schlappi and the rest of Schlappi Engineering again for um, making sure that we were able to make this episode. 
as said, um, he will be our special guest on our Discord live interview and Q&A next Tuesday. So that's the 18th of January in this year, 2022. Wow, that sounds like, <laughs> that sounds awful. 2022 already, wow, time does fly. Um, that being said, I do hope everyone has had a um, blast watching this video. I do want to thank everyone again. Uh, do make sure that if you do want to pick up the well, the boundary or any other module uh, that you use one of the affiliate links below, uh, because that will indeed help the channel tremendously. As you know, uh, that's the source, uh, the, well, the only source of income for this uh, channel is indeed, well, YouTube and the affiliate links. So please uh, feel free to have a look at that. And if you want to, um, well, if you want to sponsor us anyway, feel free to uh, buy me a coffee or uh, join us on Patreon. Um, I would just say thanks again for all your support. Please, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you for my next video. Cheers.